Hello and welcome back and yes it's time for another best of the year video. Today I'm going to talk about the best four bay to buy now at the end of 2020. If you're watching this in 2021, hello, how's your new year? Going well has it? Right now there are a lot of four bay NAS. It's easily one of the most popular areas of desktop network attached storage. Four bays brings the benefits of RAID storage and also allows a lot of data storage companies to kind of really flex their muscles a bit in terms of hardware because you need enough drives to kind of saturate the network connections. There's not much point throwing a lot of hardware at devices that are smaller than that. Ergo, you generally find that four bays are where you find most of the NAS brands really start to flex those muscles and show off what their systems can do. And a number of you that are buying a NAS for you know a small medium business or maybe a prosumer, photographer, stuff like that, you will generally find that four bays are where you find the sweet spot in terms of capacity versus capability. So I'm going to talk about my top three NASs that you should buy because I think all three of these solutions bring their own degree of merit to the table. But as I say, there have been a lot of NASs over the years. So I thought I'd let you know first off my parameters on what helped me choose these three over all of the others as well as the one that came ever so close to the finish line but didn't quite make it. So these are the parameters. First and foremost, any NAS to be considered for this list needed to be released before October 31st, 2020. They can have been released in 2017, 18, 19, and of course 20, but they have to have been available for sale before October 1st, 2020. Um, anything that's released after that date or stuff that's been revealed but not actually physically available before that date will not make the cut. Secondly, I am only looking at devices that have got at least two years of warranty attached to them because I think when you're spending this sort of money, four bays, you're looking at five, six hundred nickel without your hard drive. Call it a grand all in. So if you're going to spend that kind of money, I want my brand to support me. So at least two years of warranty and in most cases, three years of warranty you find on a decent little four bay NAS. Next, I'm only looking at ones where the NAS itself can support all of the software flagship apps that the brand tells me it offers. If the brand says, oh, I've, oh our brand is, can do X, Y, Z, and then you get the NAS and it doesn't support those flagship programs, get out. We're not going to consider you. We are only looking at 4 bay NASs that support the flagship applications, your surveillance station, your QBR Pro, your VM tools. It better have it or otherwise we're not looking at it. Next, I'm only looking at desktop solutions because although there are a lot of good rack mount solutions out there, I think rack mounts are far more specialized tools um, when it comes to installing a NAS. And although these days it isn't uncommon for home users to use a rack mount in their own environment, it's still ratio-wise like <laughs> eight or nine to one or two in favor of home, um, desktop users over that of uh, the rack mount users who have got this stuff deployed at home in an attic or something and finally i'm only looking at nas's that are 64-bit x86 style processor architecture that's amd and intel cpus but i'm not going to be looking at the likes of real techs or marvels or anything that's an arm based processor be it 64 or 32-bit the reason being that pretty much any NAS that utilizes processors of that nature will almost certainly not support the flagship applications that the brand talks about. And the last thing you want to do is buy a NAS off a brand that says it can do this and then getting it home and it goes, can't do that today. And those are our parameters. Any NAS that was considered had to meet those and then we filtered it down. So what was the NAS that never made the cut? What's the secret fourth place? What's the honorary thanks for trying but no cigar medal? That goes to a QNAP NAS. It's the TS431KX. Now that was released in late summer 2020 and it didn't make the cut for several reasons. First and foremost, it uses an ARM based processor. So click that off the ticket. So it's not using all the different applications. Also, it had that two years warranty, which is more than enough. And it was a 10 GBE now, so it's quad core with two gig of memory, which is all pretty impressive indeed. But there's no avoiding it. It's going to give you slightly lackluster performance. And although the, you know, the majority of NASs in this category that I've seen so far either had 10 GBE or had means and ways to upgrade that performance, there's still, for me, no avoiding that the 431KX, although a very, very affordable business 
uh, file processing 10G NAS brought a lot to the table with RAID support too. It just didn't make the cut. And it would have if they just gave it a better CPU. So let's talk about the ones that did make the cut. Firstly, I want to talk software. I want to talk about the Synology DS920 Plus. Now this four bay for me, although it's not earth shattering, because I think we all kind of had the same reaction when the 920 first came onto the market, like why is it one GBE? Everything else about it, I think, ticked a lot of boxes, and it re arrived at a price point that was comparable to the 918 that came before it. It has great features and functionality for a 4 bay. It's expandable. It's got BTRFS. It supports Synology Hybrid RAID for that fluid RAID system. It's got three years of warranty. It has a lot going for it. It runs Plex Surveillance, the gamut of Synology's own collaboration suite of applications, and it arrives about 530 to 550 quid. We're seeing prices float around online on different sales events, and it is a popular device. It isn't a huge leap off the 918 that came before it, and its hardware architecture, right the way down to the NVMe SSD caching base, is comparable. But it's still a better NAS than the one that came before it. And it's still probably one of the best nine bays comparatively that Synology, uh, the best four bays that Synology have ever released. I mean, yes, it could be better. And yes, we wanted more, but it's at least better than what was there before. And if you are focusing on a Synology NAS to be your best four bay, this is the best four bay Synology out there. And before anyone waves at me and says the DVA3219 surveillance NAS, Come on, you know that's not going to count. So, what comes after that? What about if you're less focused on that software and you're looking for a far more balanced start in terms of hardware and software? That's, of course, going to be the QNAP. It always is the TS453D. Now, the 53D series, you know, part of the 53 series overall is another series, much like Synology's range, that every few years gets an upgrade, but it's arguable that the upgrade on the 453D was greater uh, um, compared with the jump that the 920 made. The 453D arriving with the same Intel quad core based CPU as the 920, the 4125. Uh, it's a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.7 per core. This graphically embedded uh, UHD 600 graphics processor with four gig of DDR4 memory gives you a lot of oomph to be getting on with in this compact 4-bay. This 4-bay also arrives with HDMI 2.0, um, which is a 4K 60 frames per second output, so a KVM setup is completely possible and desirable, with many, many first-party and third-party applications supporting the HDMI out, while the system is being used simultaneously by network and internet-connected users all at once. It also has five USB ports, Arguably a little disappointing given that there's a lot more USB 2 than there should be in my opinion. But it does feature 2.5 GBE. Whereas the 920 before it had that 1 GBE, this is 2 times 2.5 GBE ports. So with link aggregation, 5 gigabit Ethernet, 500 megabytes per second throughput. We can be approved even further with that USB to 5 GBE QNAP adapter that's floating around that allows you to add more ports. So... There's already a lot going for this device, and with that, you've also got PCIe upgradability that, um, that allows you to add 10 GBE or M2 NVMe cache, but unfortunately, it is a PCIe Gen 2 times 2 due to the limitations on the PCIe lanes internally on this processor being used up by all of the different features and functionality. The result is that if you do put a 10G card in this, you should be okay for 1,000 megs at PCIe Gen 2 times 2 but if you use the combo card, the QM2 card, you are going to have to share that bandwidth out a little bit. The 453D is a very solid NAS from QNAP, and as mentioned, it will support the entire range of applications in QTS, part of their uh, GUI, their operating system, and there's a large degree of applications there for backups, for multimedia, for surveillance, for virtual machines, for uh, containers, for Linux Ubuntu deployment, there is so much going on with it. And with great file handling and file management in file station queue search and queue filing, as well as the Office 360 um, plugin, whereas Synology have their own first party tools for file management and file handling in the collaboration suite, the QNAP, on the other hand, does allow you to 
um, open a lot of these applications using the very familiar Windows um, Office 365 application. And there's also vast improvements between migration between cloud platforms and the NAS with things like Virtual JBOD, allowing you to bolt on NAS storage to the cloud and other NASs, as well as hybrid mount that allows you to mount cloud services as localized storage and then utilize the QNAP software assets with them. You've also got support of things like BoxSafe, which allows you to connect and synchronize with G Suite and Office 365 to create another layer of data protection and failover in the event of Office users who are utilizing those cloud services with their own included accounts and email and online space synchronized with the NAS. So if your internet connection drops, all of that accessibility is still very present on the QNAP at all times with BoxSafe. What I'm saying is the QNAP, although its software doesn't quite reach the user friendliness and shininess of the Synology platform, it does get very, very close and it does it with a lot more hardware uh, under the bonnet. So what's going to be my third NAS? Well, that's going to be the Locker Store 4 from Acer Store. Now, as mentioned in my best two bay videos and in previous videos, the Locker Store 4 represents a really nice middle ground between the Synology and the QNAP option. The reason being that the software doesn't really challenge either brand to its highest uh, extent. It does have multimedia tools. It does have surveillance tools. It's got BTRFS. It's got a VM tool as well. But a lot of these tools are either third party or a little bit more of a simplified, uh, simplified fashion. It doesn't have AI photo recognition. It doesn't have a lot of the um, VM backup tools, the active backup and hybrid backup sync three and uh, the VM initiator tools from QNAP have, but it does bring the bare necessities. It does bring a lot of the core applications that you're probably going to use day to day, included in the Locker Store 4. On top of that, it also arrives with a lot of the hardware that we saw on that QNAP. It arrives with two times 2.5 GBE network ports, lovely stuff there. So again, five gig over the lag. On top of that, HDMI 2.0, so again, 4K 60 frames per second. But it also has, along with the four bays and an LCD, it has those M2 NVMe caching bays that can be used for both caching and raw storage. So it has a lot of features and functionality. And although it arrives at the most expensive price tag of the three, at around 575.80, with the 920 and the 453, D arriving at about 530 to 550, the margin isn't huge. And that Lock Store 4, although it doesn't challenge the other two brands on the software level quite yet, the hardware inside, if you're going to use third party apps and you're going to use your own system third party stuff and what you wanted is network attached storage, the Lock Store 4 brings a lot to the table for you. And with all three systems arriving, with three years of manufacturer's warranty and all three systems being expandable and all three systems bringing their own brand flavor to the table, these have been my top three four bay NASs to buy at the end of 2020. Now, if you're watching this video, let's say beyond May 2021, there may be better NAS devices out there and I will let you know, so make sure you subscribe. Now, click like if you've enjoyed the video because it helps me know I'm getting things right. And of course, if you want to learn more about these individual NASs, head down into the comments to find that, uh, into the description to find the link to NAS Compares where I go through all of my results. I tell you how I came by these three being my top three and more about them, how they compare with the others and the hardware reviews. So do check those out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.